Founders of Alexandria By Star Scribe Part 2 Joseph Chapter 5 Joseph knew almost nothing about how to be in a successful relationship with a woman. Indeed, he had never been in one prior to the event, and his brief experiments and attempts had shown him that what little he had learned online and in printed media fell woefully short of the mark when it came to providing useful instruction. So far, he had only managed to discover a few things. The most important thing was that, just like men, Women liked it when you spent time with them and cared about the things they cared about. It seemed a revolutionary idea to him, so much so that he wrote it down somewhere on his computer where he would see it every day. Of course, the most difficult part wasn't writing down something that seemed wise, but living it. Finding a shared interest with Mariah hadn't been difficult, both of them enjoyed video games, and they probably played more of them than anyone else in the colony. Indeed they had spent a good number of hours making changes to one of the town's theaters so they could play games on the big screen. A colossal waste of resources, but also an amazing way to let off steam. But what else did he have in common with Mariah? A love of magic, for one. Mariah's generally disastrous results when she tried doing magic had cured Joe of any real interest in helping her with it. Her power was tremendous, probably greater than his own. Unfortunately, the prosthetic seemed only to be a way to open up the floodgates at will, not a way to improve the quality of what came through. There was one other thing they both loved, and it happened to be the only other thing that presented tangible benefits to the colony, solving mysteries. Mariah didn't have any particular skill for it, or anything besides flying, that he knew, but she was fiercely stubborn and attentive to detail. That was often the most important factor. The Edgar County Courthouse was located in the center of the town's square. It was quite large and would probably make for all sorts of things for the community one day, as it had for 200 years, but for now, one of the courtrooms made for an excellent work area. The building already had power for the radio, which Mariah had got working over a week ago, along with a Wi-Fi network sharing the satellite connection. Joseph had his laptop upstairs along with several rolling cork boards, all arrayed on the floor in place of the tables for defense and prosecution. The semicircle was ringed with the text of the transmission, covered with all sorts of printouts, probabilistic models and charts from his attempts at hand translation. So far, nothing he had done had turned into an answer, which was more or less to be expected at this stage. Joseph liked to pretend he was a cryptographic genius but in truth he was far better at keeping people out than breaking in. His cutie mark didn't help him either, so much as he had otherwise felt his ability with computers had improved after he got it. Mariah sat beside him in a hard wooden chair, sipping black coffee and scanning the text of the message. She looked to be deep in concentration, though Joe couldn't even guess what she might be thinking. He was thinking that she looked cute when she was thinking, but he wasn't going to say so. Mariah didn't like it when he initiated things. She had to be the one in control, or she would shut down and not want to be around him for hours. He would save the compliment for later. I think we're going about this the wrong way, she said, rising suddenly to her hooves and setting the coffee aside. Oh. He watched her, trying to sound curious. He would never have admitted it, but he didn't really think there was much chance she would solve it. She was here to help him, not the other way around. Still, he had to keep an open mind. Commercial pilots were many things, but he had never known them to be generally stupid. I think we should take a step back. We need to figure out who's sending the message before we can try and decode it. Figure out why they're encoding it. If we can crack their mindset, cracking the code should be easier too. Okay. He rose too pacing along the length of the boards. The text itself was printed in gigantic letters to huge paper signs, a poster that spanned the whole distance. So who's sending it? I don't think it's survivors, first of all. Mariah gestured around the empty room. The courtroom could have easily seated 75, though they were the only ones inside. We thought we were the only humans in the world for months. Why would we hide ourselves? 
we want to be found. And no, don't say it's bad people left behind, because that doesn't make sense either. What's there to do that's bad? There are so few other settlements, and they're so spread out, you could rampage through half of them and nobody would know if it wasn't for the satellite phones, which I think it's clear they don't know about. Because. Because if they did, why would they be broadcasting their code for all the world over a transmission anyone could pick up and try to break? Those phones might be monitored, true, but they could have used their code over the line exactly like they're using right now. That would have reduced the number of people who could try to break it to whoever is in control of the Iridium network. Joseph took a moment to process all that. Eventually he nodded. Okay, so it wasn't someone from the settlements Adrian has visited, because it makes more sense for them to be using the satellite network, and if they were, we'd never have known, because we actually don't monitor anything. Who does that leave? Not the HPI we can kick them off the list. They have their own military satellites, and they don't use vocal codes. We wouldn't get anything from them. I don't believe it would be other survivors at all, pretend I'm right, okay? That only leaves aliens. Equestrian aliens, to be specific. The other universe is sealed off, right? For thousands of years. Mariah's eyes narrowed. That information is suspect. Seriously. It was his time to look incredulous. If we can't accept that, what can we accept? We're not here to question everything they told us. We're trying to crack a code. Mariah gave an exaggerated sigh. Fine. We'll pretend the princess was being honest. Ekestria has been cut off, so there wouldn't be any point in sending radio messages back. Not to mention this isn't the equestrian code. That was numbers, and it was a transmission powerful enough that we heard it all over the world. This one isn't. The HPI didn't hear it, and they're only a few states away. Yes. She smiled. Consider this, Sunset Shimmer sent her messages in code, and Alex never learned why. It wasn't us she was trying to keep her messages from, it had to be other ponies. I would bet receiving a transmission from another universe takes some specialized equipment. I would bet that the people she was afraid would overhear were on this side. It's even possible, likely given the evidence, that the ponies she was trying to conceal herself from chose to stay behind when Ekestria supposedly drifted too far to allow for travel. It was quite the string of inferences, no doubt about that. Joseph didn't know if he should be impressed or merely annoyed by it. He supposed that would come down to whether she turned out to be right. Suppose that's what happened, you're saying the code is coming from more equestrians. They're stranded here for the rest of their lives. What's the point of using code now? If they were opposing Sunset Shimmer and her group, it doesn't matter because all of those ponies went home. Let's say they did. Mariah paced past the corkboards, not seeming to really see them at all. What kind of person is willing to leave their old world behind forever? Willingly sever themselves from family and friends forever? Like what happened to us, but, doing it to yourself? He considered that a moment, before finally answering, heroes and monsters. Could be ponies even more noble than Sunset and the ones like her, staying behind to help us rebuild. Or... Or it's people who are so dissatisfied with their lives that they wanted a fresh start. Pioneers, or, revolutionaries. Criminals, political dissenters. There would be no reason for the first group to hide. But the second. Joseph levitated a pen in front of him, guiding it and an empty piece of paper to the table and beginning to write. So let's assume we're dealing with bad ponies from Ekestria. What does that tell us? He frowned. They're going to use an analog cipher. They won't have or even understand computers. They'd be hiding either from, us, or from each other. Maybe they're competing, or... He set the pen down. It's just speculation at this point, but it could be. If we could only decode it. Hope to God it's actually a code, not just some equestrian language we don't know. None of the books have anything about them. 
unless they didn't want. Stop. He put a hoof on her shoulder, though not in a romantic way. We're not trying to second-guess Luna or any of the ponies she sent. That's another discussion, not related. We can't have confounding variables. So, it's bad ponies, or just political dissenters. They're separated in more than one group, and they're close enough that their transmitter doesn't reach that far. What are they saying? Mariah stood beside him, resting her head on his shoulder. That's the question. Figure it out, Joe. I know you can. Yet. Yeah. He nodded. I'll, figure it out. The code had confounded him for over a week now. He would get it this time, and soon enough to actually make a difference. When you do, we can give them a call. Use their code. If they're ponies who disagreed with how the equestrian monarchs handled Earth, then they're our friends. Maybe they can learn all the things we didn't get books about. Learn how we can get even for what they did.